Filling in for Linda Miller, this is Daniel A. Wallace's eighth speech in 40 years. <laughs> <laughs> and is as close to impromptu as you can get. Dan never liked anyone telling him what to do. His speech is titled, Get Out of My Face. <laughs> Please welcome Toastmaster Daniel A. Wallace. In our reverse meeting, I think our word of the day should be excursion. <laughs> you want to hear a funny joke? Uh -huh. oh, maybe. <laughs> uh, PR or the uh, HR guy at the, well, at the Sentinel was, was interviewing a, a new prospective employee that he really wanted to hire. And in the interview, he looked at her resume and he said, can you explain the four-year gap in your work experience? And she said, I went to Yale. And he said, boy, Yale, you know, that's wonderful. You're hired. Sign this five-year contract. It's binding. And we're on board. So she signed it. And she looked up and she said, and thank you for the yacht. <laughs> you know, I had a pretty normal childhood. Early on, early on. My parents worked from the South and moved to New York to go into business with my <coughs> in the uh, Lighthouse for the Blind franchise. The blind people made belts and wallets, and, and the franchise sold them and made a profit. And life was pretty good until one day it was determined that my uncle had been embezzling from the blind people. And I guess they never saw that one come. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Overnight, our lives did change. We went back to Atlanta. My sister went to live with my Aunt Reedy. My brother went with Randy Wallace. And I went to live with my Uncle Charles in rural Buford, Georgia. That was quite a, quite a change from New York City. But my parents took about a year to get, get it all back together, and they did. And the good news was we were all back together. The bad news, we moved into the Federal Housing Project in the inner city of Atlanta. I guess the violence was the worst part of that, uh, but you know, kids are kids, and rich or poor, I met some real characters there. Uh, many of you know that I've been separated for over three years, and my friends asked me, well, why don't you just get divorced? Well, I can't afford it. <laughs> I need the tax treatment. Car insurance is cheaper. And we go to um, Perkins. On, on Sundays and split the 55 plus breakfast. <laughs> and I'm really broke. I broke are you? I'm so broke, I, I went to my friend Herb Wise and asked for financial advice and, and, and how to date. He, he came up with a good idea. So I called his advice. I got up the nerve and I asked uh, an appropriately aged woman to. <laughs> I want a date, and I wanted it to be special too. So I, I, I made reservations at Fleming's, and things were going very nicely. In, in the in the bar at happy hour, we were talking, getting to know each other. But things took a pretty bad turn when we went into the main dining room, and, and she met our host, the financial planner. So three hours went by. <laughs> And she gave me the stink eye, and on the way home, she never said a word to me. I never got her to call me back. <laughs> now, things had gone well in that. Herb gave me another idea. He had a postcard from, from a timeshare that was going to take her out for the weekend for a free timeshare <laughs> in Coco. <laughs> I've always used humor as a crutch. It's just a way to, for, a, for a lazy, introverted person to get attention. <laughs> and God knows I need attention. <laughs> I've told jokes my whole life. When I decided to take the craft more seriously, I still needed a crutch. Many of you have seen my impression of Sling Blade or the Horse Mask. Those were crutches. And I got some valuable advice at Toastmasters. Some of the members told me, he said, Daniel Day, that stuff's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> he 
And so I cried for about a day. I'm a sensitive one. Yeah, but then I, I said, yeah, they're right. So I asked one of one of the more sensitive members, the late John Nucitelli, for some advice. And he said, try being authentic. <laughs> I, I, I said, I don't know how. He said, what's the worst that could happen? So, so I said, okay. So here it is. I was bullied in school. I was a clumsy, awkward kid. I was labeled as sensitive. It's not my fault. That's better, Daniel Day, John said. Now, having said all of that, I think I'm ready to start taking responsibility for myself. Now, it's not, it's not my fault. It's Putin's fault. <laughs> <laughs>